Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to, ah, um, whoa, where did we go? Um, our last podcast on kinetics, as I scroll the wrong way because my hand hit the scrolling part. And this one, believe it or not, we've covered most of the other parts early on, so there's only a couple of parts of this. So for a reaction to be successful, okay, collision theory, this is the big dog. This was highlighted earlier on when we talked about the most important parts of chemistry is the collision theory and Coulomb's law. So for a reaction to be successful, particles must collide. They must collide with enough energy, and they must collide with the correct orientation. Now, I emphasize that because in Excel, when we talk about this, people forget the collision part. They only remember two-thirds of it. So just be careful about that. It's not as much of an issue in AP chemistry because that's a very general part, but still. Okay. Successful collisions are rare. Okay. Successful, I'm, I said collisions, successful reactions are rare. Okay. So things collide all the time, but they're not very good. Okay. Um, I played baseball for, oops, I played baseball for, I don't know, from age six to age 20. And the number of home runs I hit would be one. Okay. I've hit the ball many, 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 many times. So I'm like one in a million. Okay. And that's it for having a successful collision being a home run. Okay. Um, to make it even more baseball-y, imagine throwing a baseball mitt and a ball in the air and having that ball fit perfectly in the mitt. Oh, here's my mitt skills. That closes and it sticks. So one in 10 million is not uncommon. That happens a lot of times. One in 10 million collisions, only one in 10 million cl collisions being successful is not uncommon. And in class, I showed the example of throwing in a pen cap and a pen in a box and having it snap closed and not snap on the wrong way, that it's just hard, okay? Reactions involve bond breaking and bond forming. Welcome back to BARF. BARF, break, absorb, release, form, okay? So, oops, bad formatting here, okay? So, um, reactions involve bond breaking and bond forming. So when that happens, you've got to break some bonds and form some bonds. So Boltzmann diagrams and reactions. There we go, number of molecules. Um, and then here we have energy. So this is often shown as kinetic energy. It's also often shown as temperature. And it'll look pretty much the same on each one. Okay. The shaded area is the only part with enough energy for the reaction to occur. Whoop. Um, a catalyst moves the line to the left. So notice how if I have a catalyst, that would shade more area and, and the old area. So a catalyst... Um, would have more particles with enough energy. Um, the Boltzmann diagram, oh, I just said that, essentially temperature, hotter diagrams, and just to, rem to remind you, hotter diagrams. So if I were to show this, it would be lower, the peak would be lower, and the peak would be brighter. And notice how the same area, um, the same activation energy before would have more particles react. Uh, so hotter diagrams are lower, brighter. I'm gonna put in shadier. So I'm gonna erase my shadiness, right? So if I drew this, notice how if I just extend that line up for the EA, it's shadier, which means more particles have enough energy to work. Colder diagrams are higher peaked and lefter. Okay, so let me um, do that. So it would be a higher earlier peak and look like that. And notice how there would be higher peaked lefter and less shady. For cold. Okay. Okay. Reaction energy profile. So um, these often have numbers. I'm going to throw some numbers up here just to be crazy. 125. And that's give me my estimations here. Um, this one right here, I'll call 125. And this clearly is not to scale. We'll call this right here um, 150. And we'll call this right here 200. All right, so um, starting materials are the reactants. They're found on the left, okay? Your starting materials may include catalysts. They may not. Sometimes they show them, sometimes they don't. The products are your ending material. So um, reactants are here. Products are here. Transition state, we have more than one transition state sometimes, okay? The transition state, oh, I did that wrong. Darn it. The transition, so 
non-limiting transition state is here. All right. They're the highest peaks. They're often called the activated complex. Uh-oh. They're the activated complex. Now, and actually, I'm changing this word activated complex. Okay. Activated complex. Um, they are the highest peaks. They're unstable, bad, Lewis dot. Indicate the number of steps in a reaction. The highest transition state is the slowest step. Okay, I'm going to leave my transition state here. Um, the slowest step is the rate determining step. Now, the slowest step, so the energy of that step is going to be, make this, the energy of this step is from start to top. Okay, so the first one has the greatest ionization, I'm sorry, greatest activation energy, and it's the slowest. All right. So, the slowest step is the rate determining step, which means the highest EA is the rate determining step. So, I will say the activation energy for this one, EA, is uh, 100 to 200. And the EA here, right, 100 to 200 is 100. And the EA here is um, 125 to 150 is 25. This is my slowest one. Okay. Um, good. Du, 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 du. Activation energy. Activation energy is the energy from reactants to the highest transition state. Okay. It is not from zero to the highest transition state. So I wanted to show that again. Many times when people look at um, activation energy, they mistakenly think you include all of this not part of EA, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite that and put it right here. That squiggly part right there is not part of the activation energy, okay? So activation energy can be shown with Boltzmann diagrams as I put here, um, and it can be shown with potential energy diagrams as shown here. So notice the lower one is Changing activation energy by catalyst changes the reaction mechanism. And that's a key one to know. So when we write our mechanisms, a catalyst can change the whole thing. Change the number of steps, change what you use. Uh, letter E is delta H. So let's talk a little about delta H. Delta H is essentially the energy of the reaction. Um, I like to call it bond energy. You won't hear it called bond energy, but that makes sense. It is products minus reactants. Okay, so delta H is products minus reactants. You most often see it as delta H of the reaction equals delta H of the products minus delta H of the reactants. Ending low is exothermic. So when I'm looking at these guys, ending low is exothermic. Ending high is endothermic. So if I start here and I end here, I went down. That's exo. If I start here and I end here, I went up. And that's endo. And that's what I did for those. And then everything else we already covered. How nice is that? So reaction mechanisms are already covered. Reaction mechanisms determine the rate law already covered. Steady state approximation means determine the rate law from the mechanism. And steady state approximation is really what do you do if you have an intermediate. Energy diagrams with multiple steps was already covered. So we're all set and all ready to roll. To that, I say, toodles.